Tourism has this enormous opportunity to attract philanthropic money or engagement through visitors. When you call it travelers' philanthropy, everybody says, what are you talking about? Yeah. But when you get to explain it a little further to them, then they say, oh, but we've been doing that. And you find two operators telling you, we helped the community to build a classroom there. We helped communities to build a... They're actually just not telling you that our travelers helped to build that classroom. It could be anything in that scale, from really personal, private, small donations that makes a change to structural investments that creates a future. And it's actually one of the areas where tourism has benefited communities most. Philanthropy um, is sort of a theory or, or a funny word to many. It's about um, engaging on a deeper level. Traveller donations to the needs of a destination. In our lives, it's tied into creating real happiness. The happiness of giving something, and especially the happiness of giving something unconditionally, may even create more happiness and more fulfillment. It is a fact that when um, operators go into an area to work with communities, they always have an advantage over many things. They know how the industry works, they have the connections, they have the experience. The, the community knows nothing except that they live in a wilderness area that happens to have an attraction in it which can be used for tourism. Destinations who are not employing the local community and the only job is for that was available for the local people here was nothing by the Askari, the guys who look after the, after the property at night. We wanted to be involved much more than that. You don't hire trained staff from somewhere else. You hire them in the community and you train them. Obviously, it'll take a little longer time to build up that level of quality in that work, but the investment is more resilient. Aquí había antes mucha pobreza, solo se trabajaba en agricultura, las mujeres haciendo nada más los oficios de la casa. We had to make our strategies to evolve together, working together into better quality of life, a better quality of entrepreneurship between the community and the hotel. Okay, tranquilo, tranquilo, ahí viene suavecito. Si quieres las alas, Hilbert, ahí, si me das el volado. Eh, yo empecé aquí en Islita en 1997 a trabajar. Eh, trabajo en áreas verdes. Our staff is about 85% is local. And this is maybe the best way in which the community um, have their benefit. More than 50% of the gross income that comes to the hotel stays in the community. Yo prácticamente salí de trabajos de campo, trabajaba en fincas ganaderas, para venir acá a aprender lo del turismo. Acá he recibido capacitaciones de eh, entre inglés y mantenimiento de jardines, riego. Actualmente también estamos con un proyecto ahí, una microempresa, que están haciendo de, de servicios musicales y también hemos eh, recibido mucho apoyo por parte de Pontislita ahora para ir saliendo adelante. Brindamos servicios acá al Hotel Pontillita en el restaurante. Gracias. Everybody, of course, is winning. We offer quality of life, but also we are offering training for better quality of living to the people that are working for us, but also living in the nearby areas. And it is the responsibility of the tour operator to try and bring up the community not only to tell them about what they're going to get. If you get into a deal with me, I will pay you um, so many dollars per bed night. I will pay you so much for leasing your land. And then let the community sit back and wait to be paid that much money. No, I think they have a responsibility to bring up the community to understand how the business of tourism works.
Sí, a mí sí, porque ya yo soy comercial. Yo vengo, lo pesco, lo empaco y se lo te entrego al hotel. De eso vivo. A mí sí me interesa muchísimo. Comencé a los 14 regando jardines en el hotel. Trabajé en mantenimiento, trabajé en salón. Ya y ahora tengo mi propia microempresa y entonces proceso marisco y todo y se lo vendo a ellos. Ellos fueron, ellos fueron los de la idea. Esta máquina me la financió el hotel. Ellos, ellos son los que están respondiendo en el Banco Nacional. Si yo no pago, ellos tienen que pagarla. Este es el empaque al vacío. Ahí está sellado. Aquí está listo para irnos a llegar al hotel. They can help to manage it. They can provide services uh, within the industry. They can provide guiding services. They can actually understand what is the process for a tourist to leave their home in America and decide that I'm going to come to Wilderness Camp. There's a lot that goes on in between. Tourism should drive really good business with very good products, income generation, job creation. I think one future for sustainability in small scale projects in communities is, is that local entrepreneurship. This bottle is from for guests. And then I come to use for trees planting. Mbesi kama ulikuwa imenisaidia sana kwa hii kasi kwa sababu ilikuwa imenipea kama hii project ilikuwa yangu. Sasa ilikuwa naendelea hivi hata tena tu ilikuwa ananisaidia sana kwa hiyo pesa nyingi sana ilikuja kufanyia hii kasi. Hata tena hii miti umefanya wada mingi sana kwa kwa watu wengine wageni wote ikikuja hapa mara kuja kununua hii miti yangu. Hapo tena nimeona hata ni ilikuwa tena ilikuwa imenipea sasa maoni maoni ya kunisaidia sana kwa hii kasi. Kama hakuna hii kasi hakuna biashara nyingine tu naasaenda tu kuchunga ngombe kwa manyata. Kwa sababu hakuna kasi nyingine tu najua kwa hii kasi kwa sio kama hii ya miti. Hata ikitaka tu tutanalipa ile watu wenye sana chunga hiyo ngombe yangu sana ndio nitapata pesa kutoka miti. Napata pesa mingi sana. Sasa hivi kuna control 150 ilikuwa nimenunua kwa miti. Naona miti sasa kama ni ni hai kwa binadamu. Mali hakuna miti hakuna hai kwa sababu kasi mingi sana ndio na patanga kwa msituni. If you build the capacity in tree planting, that can be turned into business for the community. So if you as a visitor pay for five trees to be planted, you're actually paying for a product in a business. Very good. I think so. Do you know what does uh, white mean? What does it mean? White mean peace. Peace? Yeah. Huh. Red? Yeah. Danger? Yeah. Black? Anything? Black? Yes. Our color. Uh, skin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a little bit of 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 a it's not really a donation, it's, it's a, an art of recognizing a quality. I want to support people here and I've seen women working there. There's some initial money needed to build up um, 
this, this cultural support project. You need a house or, 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 a, or a project site, you need some tools, you need someone to train, community, and, and, a, and a few other things. That initially may be a donation. That be part of either philanthropy or corporate social investments. Bueno, el arte que, que hacemos aquí lo vendemos. Para nosotros es una fuente de ingresos, ¿verdad? People can learn to be creative, and that helps not only to make groups of artists, but also makes people capable of being leaders in the community, uh, capable of making little enterprises. And so creativity and art really, we felt, we felt it really helps development. Es un orgullo en realidad, nos sentimos, yo creo que todas, verdad, muy orgullosas. Yo tengo 76 años y hasta ahora yo he podido desarrollarme así. With any nonprofit organization, a challenge is finances. One advantage that this organization has is that it was based on tourism. So right there, we had a market, so we were able to bring tourists here. The tourists learn from the cultural and environmental issues in the area. What the tourists pay, a little percentage stays with the organization to help support environmental education, English classes, after school programs, libraries, artisans, all these different other projects. Al centro de aprendizaje, a ese les ha, les ha favorecido mucho a los niños y a la comunidad. Yo quise tener voluntarios por, para ver para los muchachos que ellos eh, compartieran y aprendieran más el inglés. Me ayuda así con lo que son ingresos. They are coordinating programs, environment education, where they go to schools weekly, after school program where they're with the kids weekly. I mean, it's a long-term program. So we look for people that have that time. I found this place, SCLC, on the internet. I've always been very interested in like getting to know other cultures, how people live in other countries. So it gives me more exposure. And it's a place that I feel like volunteering it means something. Nosotros la llevamos ahí y ella nos ayuda a nosotros, porque ellos allá no tienen árboles ni ni animales y cuando aquí vienen a ver los árboles y animales y nos, nos enseñan mucho el inglés y nos enseñan la cultura de ellos. It's a small area. There's not very much opportunity for education. So bringing people from abroad with knowledge from other places um, about the world will offer more to the people in Sarapi. Aquí la chiquita fue el, el, el escudo de la madre y resulta que se le soltó la mano y él nos fue la atropelló un carro. ¿Por qué? Porque no teníamos la, la acera todavía. Es muy importante esta acera. Duramos cinco años y en esos cinco años este, vinieron estudiantes de, de varios países. El turismo ayuda mucho que porque en las comunidades fui muy, muy quitado para, para la ayuda. Y por eso sin la ayuda del turismo no hubiéramos hecho eso, no hubiéramos terminado. Volunteering in itself is in a way it's philanthropic because um, it's a little bit for your staff too, but like you are wor working without expecting anything back. I might be the role model of this place. I think it's true. Being given a camp like this to run, it's not very easy. Women are always under the men, always. But if you accept it to get education, at the end of the day, people will respect you. Because I guess right now, in the entire community, people respect me. And I think they are changing an attitude of giving girls education. Being educated means that you have, you know, a shift in the way you perceive life. I think I have realized one thing, that when Masa women are being given empowerment, they can do it. <laughs> They 
economic situation in our village is very poor. 127 people in one classroom due to shortages of classrooms. We get kids from America or some other places, then we use them for uh, community service projects. There are a lot of people who want to, to give back. Just to jump, start a classroom. We started with the roofing level, and then the village, they finished it off. Because you don't also to create a kind of uh, total dependency. When we look at this issue of sustainability, it's about people um, in, you know, having that capacity, you don't want to be uh, patriarchal and say, you know, well, if you let us have this, we'll build you a school. It should be very much engaging them and having to deal with the capacity of, um, of how do you use money for the benefit of everybody. We gave them the land to put their camp, and they gave us money from the tourist money. We build these classes for our kids, latrines for our kids. In the school, we get boreholes. We are progressing. We know what to do with that money. The tour company, they are not follow anything again. They are just helping us and then they stay far away. We have a lot of things to do. So the money is, is becoming too small, but it's better than nothing. On our side, we see we are seeing we are progressing now because we have our school. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to to make yourself look good because you can be uh, you know maybe you've got a good product, you're bringing a lot of people. It's a high end kind of operation, and you can. Um, put money into the schools, put money into showcase kinds of things that look good. As a tour company, it's much easier to do that than to try to deal with um, that community. They just build something to make them look good and for them to use for their own brochure, for their own benefit, but they don't really, they don't really exist in the community. A lot of operators receive this kind of donations from travelers and they just go to the community and tell the community, we want to build you a bowl or we want to build a classroom for you. And they never really, the community doesn't know exactly how much was donated, who donated it and where it has gone to. They just accept what um, they have received. So we end up with a situation of handouts and travelers' philanthropy must never be handouts to community. The other danger is that philanthropy, again, creates, creates a demand. And if you don't have the supply, which is money, coming over time, you create mistrust in the community. So you start projects, you can't finish them. And they're standing there like skeletons. And you wait for the next person to come and give sometime in the future. When they came, we built that, the last house, that one. Yes. Which is unfinished yet? Unfinished yet, yes. Uh, what's keeping it from being finished? Yeah, the problem was the uh, financially, <laughs> because when we, they they went, the student went home. They it is our uh, responsibility to finish this. So two students said, okay, we are going to contribute. When we go home, we we'll send you money to buy the to help to start the the, the dispensary here. So they send the money and then we give to the village. And then they bought all this stuff here. And they started like you can see now. That's the end of it. And how long ago was this? Oh, I think it is now one year since we started to build this uh, dispensary. We've been building kind of white elephants. They, don't, they never get finished. Like this, like this one, it's two years now. Nothing has been done. And it's, they don't have money. These people will, will keep on hoping and hoping that at one time tourism, this money from the tourists will, 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 will benefit us or will enhance us, will, enhance, will, uh, will help to alleviate poverty. But that is not the case. You find the tourists are happy. They have no idea of what is happening. They are not aware. One and two decades ago, these people who started um, Travelers' philanthropy without knowing what it was um, 
took donations without having any particular structure or any plan um, that had been communicated with the community, for example, in advance. They took the money because someone wanted to help a school and then they went to the community and said, I have money for a school. Regardless if a school was really what the community needed or wanted. What actually ended up on the ground and what you can feel and see and touch is, is minimal. Why? Because there are so many assumptions that have been made about communities. That this is all communities want is to benefit. Provided you give them a benefit, it's going to work. There is inequitable sharing of uh, this dividend from tourism. If you don't include local community in your conservation, uh, your, your business will not run uh, smoothly and it is not even sustainable because what happens if the community decides to, to cultivate around your farm? In the end results, this, the money paid by these tourists really doesn't reach to these people. From my own observation, my own research, my field studies and all that I have found, Tourism is sucking our blood. Tourism is exploiting us. And tourism is really killing us. So when communities get into tourism, they must know what need they're addressing, and they must be clear and clearly understand where is it that they want to go with the business when they get involved with it. Without that clarity, they'll always get lost somewhere in the middle. You can't barge into a community with a map and saying, guys, look here. But if you know community, if a community knows you, if you have already created a relationship of trust, when the community then realizes the scope of possibilities, they will discuss and come back and we can say, well, this is what we can contribute with. Like healthcare, education, water, business centers, trading, communication. Now we have community conservancies coming up. That's a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean this is in a way fairly high stakes going in saying that you have land we want to lease it, we'll pay for it, we'll guarantee 30 years of payments. The community now owns extremely valuable real estate that wasn't very valuable before they made it valuable by making it a world-class tourist attraction and they're the landlords of the white people who are operating a hotel on their land. And then after that, very, very subtly showing people all the other things can be at schools and scholarships for kids to get them out of there, get them someplace else, especially if you have it set up so that uh, there's big incentives to come back. So what we're talking about here is a very large scale, long-term project that partly can be driven by philanthropy um, for a long time. And the one down below is the male. Yo soy nacido aquí en la zona. La noche de luna nosotros solíamos salir con los compañeritos, mis amiguitos, a pasear, a jugar a la playa. Y había veces que nos encontrábamos en las tortugas. Y lo montábamos hasta cinco, siete de nosotros. En una ocasión que nos montamos diez en una aula. Niños, te estamos hablando, nosotros teníamos una edad de cinco años, cuatro años. Nuestros padres decían, este, o caminar por la noche para cazar las tortugas, por su carne, para los huevos, vender, para soportar nuestras familias de que se decretó Parque Nacional esto, uh, las comunidades le ha servido mucho el turismo y todo eso es un gran progreso.
Eh, buenas, buenos días, eh, mi nombre es Bernie Brenes, soy el gerente de Puerto Ecológico Caño Blanco. Esta es una estación de pasaje de turistas que van rumbo a la zona de Tortuguero a ver el deseo de turistas. Aquí eh, normalmente estamos recibiendo de 500 a 600 personas diarias en tener entrada. Desde los 1980s, el turismo en Tortuguero ha crecido increíblemente using turtles as, as, a, as a tourist attraction, essentially. Traditionally, the way people went on the beach to watch the turtles lay their eggs was that they would walk along the beach with a guide looking for nesting turtles. So what, you, what was happening was people would be walking, the turtles would be coming out, and they'd be disturbing the other turtles that were coming ashore to nest. And then there was a study done that showed what everybody suspected all along, that when people did that, it scared the turtles and made the turtles go back into the ocean without laying eggs. So what we said, okay, the obvious answer, rather than having them all wandering around the beach until they find a turtle, which could take hours, we'll just have a few trackers on the beach. So a trained local person who was out on the beach with a radio, and he would be the one that was looking for the turtle, and then he would radio her location back to the tour group. And then, obviously, you know, we've, we've, we've created this program, and then the next part was, well, how do you finance it? So we came up with a real simple idea. Let the, the tourists who are visiting the turtle voluntarily pay for that program. Brochures were created, and each brochure had a sticker asking the very people that are coming to look at turtles, so the tourists themselves, asking them to, to contribute to this program. The message of the brochure is, don't let the turtles see you on the beach without a sticker. And the brochure cost $4. And it was around 70% uptake, um, which was incredible. And in that way, we were able to raise, last year, about $120,000, which went towards paying the salaries of a whole group of people from the community who worked as turtle spotters during the high season and created a surplus of around $65,000. Like so many things, it worked, but it didn't work the way we thought it was going to work at all. Eh, nosotros decidimos, ¿verdad?, desde el año pasado, con el, eh, con el programa de, de rastreadores, pues eh, colaborar lo más posible y lo que hicimos no, fue integrar el, 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 los cuatro dólares Igual que el resto de los hoteles. The majority of, of people that did purchase a, a sticker were coming through a main hotel and they, a lot of them were including it in their package. So it was the, the hotels making the decision rather than the individual tourist. Son hoteles con una economía eh, mucho más grande que la que pueden tener los, los, los guías locales que operan eh, independientemente en el pueblo. Para nosotros sí es caro porque ellos eh, creen y entienden que si es en el pueblo pues es mucho más barato. Entonces si cuesta 15 dólares se lo ofrecen en 10, pero no le dan el sticker. So I think it's important to remember that the program doesn't only rest on the guides and the program coordinators, it also rests on the tourists and not all of them are as interested as we would think in supporting something like um, additional costs that go directly towards turtle conservation or turtle monitoring. El guía en contrabando es el guía en un restaurante. O le dieron un sticker para ir a la playa. No, no por el momento. No sabemos qué hay eso. I'm guessing we maybe got 10-15% compliance. When it actually the traveler had to come up on their own hook and decide that they were going to give the money or not give the money. They were going to go on the beach with or without the sticker. We're proud of this program in some way. And the other way, we know that there's a work in progress. But the main interesting point in this is that this program changed the focus of the visit to the beach. The focus before was one of consumption, one of entertainment, and it turned from being one of education and one of support and one of engagement. And that engagement took place with the tourist and with the hotel owners. There's no formula for, for travelers' philanthropy. It's something that has to be designed 
according to the circumstances where you are, the product, the community, the type of travelers you attract. I, I think you, you, have to, you have to look at it uh, with a business approach, that you have to have a, you have to have a method around it that, that works. Um, this is not about uh, cheating or tricking or lying or luring someone into doing it. It's, it's making them see, making them feel and understand that I can be part of this. I can give and it makes a difference. Then you will, you will get a critical mass. Even as they leave their homes to travel, they're looking forward to making a difference in the destinations that they visit. But most of the time they miss the opportunity to do that because probably the, the, the areas, the destinations they end up with or the operator they end up with has no such program. And this is why we have a lot of travelers who stop at trading center and will then give out some shoes, give out some clothes, because it has not been organized. There is no organized system through which they can give. If we have 2,000 visitors in a year in base camp coming to the Mara over the year, I think that over 90% of those are philanthropists. Some of them know it, most of them don't know it. Um, so, so we're not really turning them into philanthropists, we're sort of just opening up the possibilities of understanding a bit more about the place where you are, about the issues that are going on, and then opening up a possibility in an easy way, simple way, to contribute and making it known that small, s small support, either financial support or in kind, can make a big difference. This has got to be accounted for separately from the business income. Because when it mixed with the business income, then we lose accountability. And when we lose accountability, we dissolution those people who want to help. Before a traveler says that uh, I want to support uh, a borehole or I want to support a school, there has to be information that is made available. And this information should have been prior collected and put together with the help of the community to, to help identify their needs. You take them to these projects, you take them to the communities. It, it can't be theory, it has to be reality. You have to feel it, see it, taste it almost. I think successful travelers' philanthropy must be based on very, very good information that is presented to the traveler when they want it and when they ask for it, that it should be available for them and it should provide them with an opportunity to make the choices of what they want to support. It can't be complicated that you have to go through a lot of processes and filling hundreds of papers and, and all that. You should be able to see something that you feel, wow, I want to give something to this. It's going to make me feel good and I think it's, it's, it's a great thing for me to be able to do it. You have to be able to do it simple. An, an equitable amount of investment should be put in the people, in developing the people and their capacity, in making them better, and more so in getting them involved so that they can have long-term benefits. And if there are no people to empower, to, 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 to capacity build and to train and to develop, the local communities will remain in poverty forever. Tourism is the only industry that is consumed at source. The clients actually have to come to the source to consume it. And because it takes place in rural areas, it is a number one opportunity for transforming um, rural economies into market economies and uplifting the livelihoods of the local people. Our world needs uh, people to you know, have expanded worldviews, and you do that by traveling and experiencing uh, different places, different cultures. When, when we're approached by things, communities, people, things we see, where we feel it's a void between the lives we live and, and what we experience. And we realize that, that sharing some of our wealth, our knowledge, our resources, is then filling that space with something fundamentally important to us. And that, to me, is traveler's philanthropy. It is traveling and learning, traveling and understanding, and being able to fill that void, that space of, that we always look for with something so simple as buying something or investing or giving. And to me, I think, whatever is left of all the theory, that to me is philanthropy. It's a basic need. 
Instead of sitting in, the, um, in 10 workshops in big hotels and talking about the benefits that could come, go and do it. Do one of them. <laughs>